During the pandemic, many at home got comfortable doing medical testing in their own homes. But with COVID-19 in the rear view, what's next for multinational medtech company Becton Dickinson? It manufactures and sells a wide range of products from catheter systems to anatomical mesh and also at-home test kits. Here to discuss on the heels of BD's Q2 report is Tom Poland, BD chairman, CEO and president, who's joined by Yahoo Finance senior reporter Anjali Kemlani. Good to have you on the show here. So, Tom, first break down for us this quarter and really what your expectations were going in. This was another quarter of exceeding expectations driven by strong demand across our portfolio. We saw hospitals really back in business um, with elective procedures. We saw strong demand for a lot of our automation solutions, things like pharmacy automation that you can't find pharmacists or you want pharmacists up front. Um, helping to do wellness checks, et cetera, for patients. They're, they're adopting our automation and putting that in place. And then we're seeing strong demand for our research solutions where people are really uncovering new secrets of the immune system to develop new drugs for fighting cancer. And some of our technologies are used right in the forefront of that research. So very strong demand there. So really this quarter um, represented just strong growth across our broad portfolio. Tom, Anjali here. I know that you did a lot of expansion during the COVID times, specifically for uh, syringes and injectables. I know there's a lot going on in that market right now, broadly speaking. So for the pre-filled syringes for the COVID vaccines, and then on the flip side, we've got a lot of interest in injectables right now with the weight loss uh, market. Talk to me about the impact on BD from both. Yeah, so we're really proud that during the COVID pandemic, we scaled up our production to produce an extra 2 billion syringes just to deliver COVID vaccines. So 2 billion doses of COVID vaccines delivered around the world with our products. And we're proud of supporting the pandemic response. And, you know, today um, we see strong demand, uh, 11 consecutive quarters of double digit growth in our pre-fillable syringe market, which as you mentioned, are used for a lot of biotech drugs. Today, the first time ever biotech drugs are there's more biotech drugs in the pipeline than there are small molecule drugs. And almost all biotech drugs are delivered via injection, which we're the market leader in. And so we don't disclose specific um, customers that we have, but we do, we are by far the world leader. And that strong pipeline of new molecules that are coming out for conditions like weight loss, but also cancer treatment and other chronic diseases, um, we're seeing strong demand <coughs> in our customer categories. Good to hear. Uh, talk to me about the COVID testing. I know that there are point of care solutions like Veritor, but we see increasing comfort with at home testing from the consumer base. Have you thought about increasing in that market? Is that part of the strategy where you're already looking at, you know, wearables and the like you already understand, uh, you know, meeting the, cus the customer? Ab absolutely. So first off, it's a great thing that COVID testing is going down. That's a big positive for the world. Um, what we saw is, is that, as you mentioned, Veritor and our Max Molecular platform, we saw strong placements of those systems for COVID testing. As COVID testing is going down, what's happening is people are beginning to use those platforms to accelerate other types of testing. And so we're seeing strong utilization of those systems for doing things like um, cancer screening, uh, for cervical cancer, for um, GI infections for vaginitis. And so those platforms that were invested in during COVID are benefiting patients in other ways today um, as customers are utilizing that more advanced technology to benefit patients. When it comes to moving care into the home, that's one of the most significant areas of investment that we're, we're making today. Um, and not just testing, but also solutions that are treating chronic conditions like urinary incontinence. Actually, just this past quarter, we submitted uh, a new product to the FDA that is aimed at allowing blood to be collected, not through a venipuncture, but by a capillary finger stick that could enable blood to be collected, for example, in your retail clinic, and eventually for you to collect your own blood at home is our aim. And so we see a lot of enabling technologies that are going to continue to move care that may have traditionally been done in a professional setting to be enabled to happen in the home, whether or not that's testing or blood collection or even um, broader chronic <coughs> disease management. And, and as we sort of, we're moving past this emergency phase of COVID, do you expect COVID testing to become seasonal? What does the new normal look like in that space? 
We do. Actually, our um, main product is a combination product that tests for flu and COVID all in one test. Because on a go-forward basis, we think the question is that someone's going to ask, because I have respiratory symptoms, I have a cold-like symptoms, do I have the flu or do I have COVID? And so that combination test is going to be what matters. And so we've launched that in the professional setting. Uh, we've been doing work to see can we bring that test into the home care setting, which doesn't exist really today in a rapid test format. And so absolutely. Um, and you're seeing more and more types of tests come to market. People have strep throat tests that uh, they're aiming to bring into the home as well. There'll be many, many more types of diagnostics that you'll be able to do in the home in the years ahead. How does that market compare to the comeback we've seen in surgery and in other clinical settings? Because I know that's a, a large portion of your pipeline. So talk to me about that versus this focus on more you know, point of care at home, the like. Yeah, that's another major area that we're focused on are, are those technologies for the hospital as, as well. And as you said, what we're seeing is there was major labor shortages during the pandemic um, in hospitals. Hospitals have found ways to um, advance that. And so you're seeing backlogs of procedures starting to work their way through the system. And so you're seeing not just BD, but many medical technology companies with increased procedure volumes coming through um, over the last quarter as those procedures are moving things. You're seeing it in orthopedics. You're seeing it in, in hernia um, procedures. You're seeing it in peripheral vascular procedures. People are able to get procedures that have been backlogged during the pandemic. They're getting them done today, and we would expect that's going to continue here, um, certainly for the, the near term. We'll certainly be tracking that. We do appreciate you joining us this morning. Tom Poland, BD CEO, and Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kemlani. Thanks so much.